Konnichiwa, minna san. Uh, hi, welcome to Japanese Language Club in Heathcote School. My name is Dr. Choi, Choi Sensei. You can call me Choi Sensei. Uh, Jap in Japanese, Sensei means um, teacher. So, Choi Sensei. Uh, so, Japanese Language Club is um, run in Heathcote School once a week. There's other opportunities also for students who are interested in anime or if they want to learn the language through GCC level. And uh, so you can see um, that this was like a welcome um, board that students prepared when the open evening happened. So I want to teach you a few things in Japanese just to give you a taster for if you would like to learn Japanese. And then after that, I'm going to show you different activities that we did in the Japanese club in the last few years. So um, please repeat after me. Hajime mashite. Hajime mashite. Hajime mash, that means pleased to meet you. If you meet someone new, you always start in Japanese with Hajime mash, that, and they reply Hajime mash, that. Then you need to tell them what's your name. So I would say, Watashi wa Choi Sensei desu. Watashi wa Choi Sensei desu. So I'm Dr. Choi, I'm Miss Choi. Now you would use your name, which is different than Dr. Choi. So you can say, Watashi wa Katie des, or Watashi wa Ahmed des. Put your name where um, the picture says. So repeat after me, but with your name, Watashi wa des. Mm -hmm. And you need to then finish the whole sentence saying, Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. So Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Together with that first phrase at the beginning, Hajime mashite, it's a, a polite way of introducing yourself in Japanese. So, yoroshiku onegai shimasu. You can break it down a little bit to make it easier. Yoro, shiku, onegai, shimasu. Yoroshiku, onegai shimasu. Yoroshiku, onegai shimasu. So, do you want to try um, all together, so I'm going to introduce myself at the pace that I would to a Japanese person. Hajime mashite, watashi wa choi sensei desu. Yoroshiku onegai shimasu. Right, Japanese people, when they um, uh, meet someone for the first time and also in many other occasions, they bow. And that bow is called ojigi. So if you follow the link that's shown at the bottom of the video, you type it into your browser, you can read much more about bowing in Japan. I'm going to tell you a few main points. So when you bow in Japan, you need to have straight back. OK, so you don't bend your back, you bow in a straight way. So you hinge from your hip, but your back stays straight. Can you see also on the picture, the person has their hands uh, by their sides. You don't put your hands together in the front like in some of the cartoons, so maybe some people do that, the Japanese don't do that. You put your hands to the side. If you're a lady, you can cross your hands in front of your belly, but normally you put your hands on the side. So depending how deep is the bow, it is more respectful. In Japan, politeness is one of the more important things in terms of the society. So there are different type of ojigi, which is the bow, and uh, if it's just, you just say hello to your neighbor as you pass them by, you're going to do a little bow, like about 15 degrees. That's called eshaku, that's the slight bow. Now, the more respectful you want to be, the more important the person that you are bowing to, the deeper your bow is going to be, as the picture is showing. Now, there's also an ultimate bow, which is called ogeza. Dogeza is when you ask him for apology. You need to go on your floor, on the floor, and you need to bow with your face to the floor. That's often hap happens if there is a businessman or a politician who's done something wrong, and they're asked to publicly apologize. They apologize in front of TV, in front of the um, newspaper journalist in that way. So I'm going to teach you some basic Japanese words uh, that are used in everyday. They're called aisatsu. Aisatsu, so greetings and other polite words. So what I'm going to show, I'm going to show you a situation and the Japanese word. And you can pause after me saying the Japanese word to try to figure out what do you think the person is trying to say in English. And please repeat after me so that you can learn how to pronounce the Japanese words properly. Number one. 
repeat after me. Ohayo. Did you guess what it means? Mm -hmm. It means good morning. You say in the morning, I'm to blah, 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 blah. Ohayo. You can see this O in here with a line that shows me that the O has to be longer O. The Japanese use some um, Japanese scripts to write, but you can write it in English as well to help the learner how to say it. Ohayo. So you can see that the first O is short and the second O is long. Ohayo. Repeat after me. Konnichiwa. Did you guess what it means? It means good afternoon. So you would say that in the afternoon, p.m. So after 12 o'clock in the morning, you would say ohayo, ohayo. And in the afternoon, you would say konnichiwa. Next one. Konbanwa. Konbanwa means good evening. That's the greeting that you would say in the evening when it gets dark. Oyasumi nasai. Oyasumi nasai. That means good night. You would say that before going to bed. Or if you say goodbye to someone, you go straight home with the plan of going to bed. Yamata. Yamata means see you. Yamata is um, a very informal. You'd say it to your friend or someone who you know very well. Yamata, see you next time. You might have to add this one. Sayonara. Sayonara. That also means goodbye. It's much stronger. You would normally, you wouldn't say that much to the person that you're going to see tomorrow. You'd normally say it when you go on a trip or when you leave for a long time or if you're never going to see someone again. So it's a bit more firm. And it's also more polite. Jamata is more for your friends. Hi. Did you guess it right? Mm -hmm. It means yes. Hi. Yep. Iye, that means no. Iye, and you see there's like a double uh, I in the spelling. You pronounce it Iye. Arigato. Arigato. That means thank you. Kudasai. Kudasai. Kudasai means please. So if you want. Uh, for example, hamburger, you'd say hamburger o kudasai. Please, can I have a hamburger? Hamburger o kudasai. Omen. Omen. Mm -hmm. That means I'm sorry. If you've done something wrong and you want to say I'm sorry, say komen. You can be more polite, make it longer, say komen nasai. You might have heard that in anime. What about this word? Sumimasen. This is the most tricky word for beginner learners in Japanese because it can mean all of these things and even other things. It can mean excuse me, it can mean I'm sorry, it can mean thank you, and it can mean pardon if you can't hear something. So I would say a beginner Japanese learner can use it as excuse me. So if you want to get someone's attention in a restaurant, you go, Oi, sumimasen, ha, sumimasen. If, uh, if you want, if someone didn't, you didn't hear someone, you would say, oh, sumimasen. So you use that word uh, in many different contexts in Japanese. Itadakimasu. Itadakimasu. You say that before you start eating. So everyone says that before eating, even if you eat on your own, you would say itadakimasu. sama. So you say that after you've finished eating, you can say that um, to the restaurant uh, owner or waiter when you're leaving, it means I liked it, it tasted nice, you know, my belly is full and happy. Okay, so this is a little dialogue. So let's hear the guy says, genki desu ka? Genki desu ka? And the lady replies, Genki desu. Can you see the U in here? You don't read it. It's as if it wasn't there. So, Genki desu. What does that mean? So, Genki desu ka means how are you? And Genki desu means I'm fine. What's the difference? This has ka. In Japanese, you don't need much to make a sentence into a question. You just put ka at the end. So, Genki desu means I'm fine. Genki desu ka? Is are you fine? Are you okay? How are you? So it just makes that statement into a question. 
So just a quick introduction to Japanese writing. There's only so much I can do in a short session like this with you. So you can see this is a picture from a Japanese comic book. Do you know what a Japanese comic book is called? You're correct, it's called manga. So uh, in uh, Japanese uh, comic books, in manga, you can see if it's written in Japanese, you can see all the different Japanese characters and they have different shapes. You see these ones that are more like straight lines. There's some other ones that are really complicated and there's some that are more like rounded lines. There are three types of characters in Japanese. You get hiragana. So you can see hiragana are more like rounded characters, but they're quite simple. They don't get very complicated. Katakana, they look a bit more like they've been cut out with a chisel. So they are much straighter character, straighter lines in them. And you also have kanji. Kanji is the same like in Chinese language. Many characters, not all of them actually, are the same as in Chinese language, uh, in traditional Chinese, not in simplified Chinese, which is used in mainland China. They come from Chinese and um, they're much more complicated most of the time. So what is the difference? Well, uh, kanji are pictograms that are based on Chinese writing and pictograms, that means they may have initially started as a drawing and then turned into a character. Uh, hiragana and katakana, uh, there's 46 characters and combinations and uh, they are for pronunciation. They're not based on Chinese writing that much. They don't uh, show the meaning as such. So for kanji, each character has a meaning on its own. But in hiragana and katakana, they don't have the meaning on their own. There's just pronunciation, like letters in English. Like in English, the letter J, it doesn't have any meaning on its own, isn't it? It's just part of a word. The same in hiragana and katakana, it's like an alphabet. Uh, each character um, has pronunciation, but it doesn't have a meaning on its own. Uh, each kanji has many different ways to say it. You can pronounce it in different ways, at least two ways for each kanji. Hiragana and katakana, each character has the same pronunciation all the time, which is um, quite easy because once you know all the uh, 46 hiragana, you can read all hiragana um, writing and you will not make a mistake. Uh, to be able to read like everyday newspaper, you need to know around 2000 kanji. I don't know that many. I cannot read a newspaper without a dictionary. I need a dictionary. And hiragana, is used for Japanese words and so for example for easy reading for students so if you're a beginner student or if you're a child in Japan you start off with uh, reading and writing hiragana because it's easier. Uh, for, um, for writing like in the newspaper it's still used for Japanese words for grammar for people's names sometimes. Katakana is always used for loan words. Loan words that means words from other languages. So if I want to write the word hamburger in Japanese, it's hamburger. I would use katakana because that's used for foreign words. If I want to write um, my name in Japanese and I'm not Japanese, my name would be written using katakana. So what I want you to do on this screen, the next screen, is to have a go at trying to guess the meaning of some Japanese kanji. So Japanese kanji have many pronunciations, but they only have generally one meaning. So what you can um, see in here, in each box, I put two kanjis and I put two meanings. Can you guess based on what kanji looks like, which uh, of the pictures is which meaning? So pause and have a go. Okay, let's check if you got it right. So this character looks like it's pointing up. So this one means up. This one is pointing down. So it's down. Did you get it right? Okay, on this one, is you have fire and water. So this character is water. It's kind of like a source, like a stream uh, or fountain spitting different directions. And this one is a fire. It looks a bit like... Um, a fire with little sparks flying off it. Next one, so we've got mountain and river. The one on the left is a mountain because it's got those three different peaks and the one on the right is a river because you've got a straight lines river flowing in one direction. Big and small. So this one is small, this one is big. It looks a bit like a person showing how big is something, right? With the legs in here and the arms outstretched, showing, look, how big is the fish that I caught? That's how I remember it. Seven and six. That's a little bit harder. Did you get it right? 
Now, these characters, they don't look like the numbers that, the numbers that they represent, but sometimes you can try to, if you want to memorize the character, try to think, how am I going to remember that this one is a seven? Well, how I remember it, if you turn it upside down, it looks like a seven, like a crossed out seven. With the six, yeah, you would just have to remember what it looks like. Alcohol and tea. Okay, so with T, you can see at the top there's these lines. They often, that part at the top is often in kanjis that have something to do with grass. So this one is in uh, is T. This one is alcohol. Uh, how I remember it, because it looks a bit like a bottle. Like this is a bottle of some sort of a whiskey and there's some alcohol at the bottom. That's how I can recognize it. So it's not, that's not the reason why it looks the way it looks. It's just the way how I remember it. Okay, man and woman, what do you think? Okay, so this one, the top part of the kanji means rice field, the bottom one means a sword. So back in the day, um, many years ago, a man could be a farmer or they could be a warrior. So this is why this kanji shows a man. And this one shows you a woman, like in a kimono, it's more just like a shape of the figure. Rain and sun, what do you think? Okay, so this one is sun, this one is rain, looks like it's raining. I hope you got, you got some of these right. And then I'm going to show you one more if you want to challenge yourself more. If not, skip to the next bit. So have a go. And without explaining, I'm just going to show you the answers. The yeah, answers are coming. I'm hoping some of this uh, made you more interested in um, learning how to write Japanese or Chinese characters. So I'm going to show you a little bit more about a uh, Japanese club as well. So the Japanese language club in the school, it happens once a week at lunchtime. Every year I choose a different day depending on my timetable. And this writing in here is one of the first things that students learn how to write. These two characters mean Japan, Nihon. Nihon in Japanese is Japan. It says Nihon. And it means uh, land of rising sun. So this means sun and this means beginning origin where the sun comes from uh, this means this is go it means language nihongo means japanese language so you can see these two characters and this one they are kanji and then he this means club and it's kurabu so it comes from english kurabu nihongo kurabu comes from english so it's written in katakana we also have anime club that happens once a week after school and um, uh, students, we have, we watched um, some of the anime from Netflix, students may be bringing DVDs, we had some special um, films uh, seen before Christmas as well, so this, this also happens. And the third activity in Japanese, we also have lessons um, for students who want to study for Japanese GCSE and these were the sessions we offered this year for beginner and for intermediate students because some students have been studying for two years these lessons are sponsored by Japan Foundation and uh, we also have sometimes additional half-term classes so these, some of the students that come to those lessons came to extra classes and these are some examples of the student work that has been done in those classes, as you can see, is getting more progressively uh, complex as the students are learning the language. Now, uh, during the lockdown, we continued activities of Japanese language club online and students have been encouraged to produce some artwork. So you can see some of the uh, pictures in here. So for this one, these are characters from different Japanese fairy tales. If you pause and note down the names of the characters, you can look them up online and learn about the fairy tales. And this is uh, Amabie. Amabie is a Japanese yokai. Yokai is a mythological animal. And it's said that this particular uh, creature, if bad disease spreads, draw a picture of her and the disease will calm down. So in Japan, this, um, this has become a trend on social media to uh, draw Amabie in the time of lockdown. So this was our last trip in February. We went to Japan Center. We went to Forbidden Planet, so these are shops in central London, and uh, we went to a restaurant uh, for Japanese food, and we also visited um, British Museum for a tea ceremony. 
Um, some of the activities of the club, we uh, de designed um, Olympics mascot for Tokyo 2020. It's just our own mascot. It wasn't any competition um, international. Uh, students sometimes produce artwork. This one was for Christmas showcase in December. And we made uh, Christmas cards using origami and we wrote Merry Christmas in Japanese. Uh, so this was kirigami session. So this is kind of origami where instead of just folding paper, you cut it and we made all sorts of different uh, cuttings. Uh, in October 2019, we had an um, open evening and students were able to dress in kimono to welcome um, students before. Uh, some of the other artwork that we've done over the years, so in Japan, uh, different cities have special manhole covers, so we designed some for uh, London, this one is supposed to be uh, Heathcote School, so this is our symbols, and this says Heathcote School and Science College in Japanese, and this is just generally for London. Some, some other artwork that's been drawn by our students, and some origami that was made in the session. And these were mascots for Heathcott School that were designed by the students. We made stamps. Uh, some of them were your know, name in Japanese. Some people chose um, drawings like a little cat. Uh, we went a couple of times to Hyper Japan. It's a festival in London that celebrates Japanese pop culture and uh, modern Japan as well as some of the historical things. So this trip was in 2000, uh, 2019. Uh, some of our students went to a manga workshop in a Japanese embassy. We went to manga exhibition in the British Museum. And we had a Japanese lunch as well. Students uh, learned in the club how to use chopsticks so they could use chopsticks in a Japanese restaurant. Uh, during the club, we also learned how to make sushi, uh, we had a kendo session where students were learning kendo from uh, kendo teachers from London. And uh, we made onigiri, which is a Japanese rice bowl. You can decorate it in all sorts of different ways. Uh, we also had a session of taiko drumming. Taiko is a um, Japanese drum, so these big drums, and they often used in Japanese festivals um, and, um, and other celebrations. So students had a go to, to play. This was our open evening 2018. Students also dressed in kimono. And we went to Hyper Japan 2018 as well. So this is a picture from then. And we went to a Japanese embassy and we did a few activities in there. One of them was this um, dancing uh, to a Japanese traditional music. And we also learned some calligraphy, how to write Japanese characters from a calligraphy teacher. And uh, this is July 2017, the first year after uh, the first year of our club running. Students got certificates for coming to the club. This is when we learned how to use chopsticks. And the first students from the uh, Japanese club, when it first started, learning how to write their names in Japanese. That would be one of the th first things you would be doing in Japanese club as well. So um, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. And Jamata, do you remember what that means? Jamata, jamata means see you. So Heathcote de jamata, I'll see you in Heathcote when you join us.